You're listening to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell, and co-host, Keelan Harvey, on Alternative Talk AM 1150. Now, back to the show with local mortgage experts, Tina Mitchell and Keelan Harvey. Welcome back to The Money Hour with your host, Tina Mitchell. And down one, my co-host is fishing fishing with his buddies and left me here with our uh, guests. So, but I'm here, right here on 1150 AMK KNW, the Saturday, June 23rd show. Uh, we are here to help you build a strong financial blueprint one week and one show at a time. If you're listening to our show at a different time or day, you are listening to a rebroadcast, but we're here to answer any questions or connect you with the guests that we have on the show. You can call the show at one 855 Again, that's one 855 or online at themoneyhour.com. In studio right now, Kim Frazier of John L. Scott. How to successfully market your home for sale and get maximum exposure. Kim, thank you so much for coming back in studio. Thank you for having me. And a little bit about Kim. Kim has been a realtor for over 16 years and hangs her license at John L. Scott office in Bellevue. She has been consistently recognized for being in the top 1% of real estate brokers, both locally and nationally. With Kim having sold over a thousand homes in her career, she offers a wealth of experience and knowledge to help her clients navigate the most important purchase of their lives. Kim also is accredited staging professional as certified luxury home marketing specialist. If you are looking for a realtor with a proven track record of success, please reach out to Kim. You can reach her at 425-209-5638, or you can always call the show uh, to get connected with her as well. And so, Kim, we're talking today about how to successfully market your home for sale to get maximum exposure. Mm -hmm. So why would you want to make sure that you take the time needed to interview agents? Uh, Okay, so it's really important, as Dan kind of touched on a few minutes ago, about not only making sure they're a good fit, you know, person, personality-wise, it's a stressful situation. You want to make sure that you have a good rapport with that agent. But we all invest differently into our listings. So like what he referenced, like a discount brokerage is not going to have probably the same deep pockets that a full-service broker yes. may have that is successful. Um, we set aside more money out of each listing um, to be able to market the listings properly. Yeah. So that's another thing is you want to kind of see what is your standard. Now, what I do standard for all of my listings may be a stretch for someone who doesn't do a lot of luxury properties Mm -hmm. or higher end properties. And I used to do the same thing on all of my listings. So I'm replicating the same thing every single time. I'm not having to create it, you know, because all of a sudden I have a million dollar listing and I have to scramble to figure out what I'm going to do to market it properly. Yeah. So it all, you know, comes down to uh, determining um, the net that you're wanting wanting to make in that Mm -hmm. property. And that's going to have a lot to do with the investment into the property. So it makes total sense. So why is it important to ask for past client reviews before hiring an agent? Because I think it's important. I think people can tell you whatever you want to hear. You want to be able to actually see some level of success that whether you're reaching out to them um, and having a phone conversation, email, text message to a past client that I've sold a house to, or you're reviewing me on Zillow and you're seeing a you know track record of success and happiness with clients. Every once in a while on Zillow, you'll get some crazy like random you know person. You're not going to make everybody happy. Every once in a while, you're going to get a review that is not consistent with your others. Of course, but I think when you're looking at someone you know over promising or they're committing to something, I think it's important to make sure they're going to follow through before you even hire them. Well, just like everything else that we do, the first thing we do now is we're looking at reviews before Mm -hmm. we're buying or making a decision on anything. Before we actually go eat at a restaurant, we're checking out the review to see. So it makes total sense. Why would it be any different Mm -hmm. when you're looking to hire uh, a real estate expert? And as Dan also mentioned, it's not about the company. It's about the individual that you are actually hiring. So making sure that you know uh, what their level of experience has been with their clients uh, on their reviews. So why is it important to set up a marketing timeline? Because I think expectations... And what is a marketing timeline? Yes. So basically a marketing timeline is going to lay out expectation, um, when things are going to release, when are we taking pictures, when are we doing photos, when is the sign going in the yard, when are we doing an open house, we're doing a broker's open. Um, If we have overpriced the listing, and sometimes, like as Dan mentioned, Ideally, we all want the listing at the end of the day. You wouldn't be at the appointment to begin with if you didn't want the listing. Sure. None of us want an overpriced listing. Um, sometimes you can get people within reason. I have clients occasionally that are just not reasonable, you yeah. know, um, and sometimes you 
it's whether you want to be the first agent or the second agent, like Dan mentioned. Mm-hmm. Um, the, you know, I'd rather be the second agent and be the one to sell it than the first agent who's invested thousands of dollars and it's yes. futilely invested. Um, so you want to make sure that you're kind of on the same page within reason mm-hmm. um, as long as they understand, you know, if it hasn't sold in the first week or two, you know, um, depending on which market you're in, whether you're in Snohomish, King or Pierce County, your marketing strategy is going to be a little bit different. Um, I was noticing this morning several homes that had price reductions in the South King County area. Yeah. Um, so you have to be cautious. Even on the east side, people overpriced 5 or 10%. Mm-hmm. The market's savvy, and things yeah. are slowing down a little bit more yes. now than we were six months ago. So six months ago on the east side, you would have to go minimum 10 to 15% typically over list price to you basically secure you're going to get the house. Okay. Today it's like 1 to 3, Yeah. you yeah. know, 1 to 5% over. So you... Uh, like I have two listings in Lake Mount right now and they both received one offer on the first review weekend. Yeah. Priced them both well. But um, we had 70 people through an open house at my Lake Mount listing, um, one of them, and we received one offer. So what do you think it it is right now that we're seeing? And it's kind of, it's it's like the market is not dying. It's just mm-hmm. getting more to um, a, a normal, not mm-hmm. so crazy. Which is healthy. But what is, it is healthy mm-hmm. and it's nice. It's You kind of just take a step back and, and breathe a little bit to go, oh, well, mm-hmm. that feels a little better, especially for you guys. What do you think is the, um, the reason mm-hmm. for it getting... Mm-hmm. A little bit more and less crazy market. Well, I think interest rates obviously impact that, as you see, on a daily basis. I think, you know, having gone up over a percent in the last six months is definitely going to settle the market. I mean, granted, I bought my first house in 1990 and rates were 10%. Yes. I bought it down to nine and a half and I thought I was rich. I was like, yay, <laughs> yeah. I'm saving so much money. A uh, second one And now it's four and a half, you yeah, know? 7. Yeah, 7.75. So in so reality, sad. you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> yes. But people, they've had this norm for so long now, mm-hmm. eight years of 0% yeah. borrowing rates, as you had to, in a healthy economy, creep those rates up yes. to have a balance. Um, it's just a little sticker shock. I think millennials are probably going to face it a little bit more than people our age, you know, just because we've seen like 8.3% was the 30 year mm-hmm. average up until yes. about seven years ago, yeah. you know, so any, anything below 6%, you think you're stealing money, Yeah. but it's just going to take people a little while to adjust to that. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think interest rates obviously impact purchase power. Um, an addition of in, additional inventory. First quarter was very slow as far as inventory coming onto market. Uh-huh. We had more buyers and we had inventory. People are kind of burned out on multiple offers, to be honest yes. with you. They're yeah. sick and tired of losing six houses. They'll sit on the sidelines, wait for things to cool down mm-hmm. a little bit before jumping in. So I think it's a combination of all three of those things. Plus, actually, seller greed. Yeah, I think all of our sellers have a tendency to think, oh, well, my house is worth this much more and yes. 10% more. And then it sits and you're like, oh. And you try to advise them, but yeah. sometimes they just have to see it on their own. Well, so a call to action for you know buyer and sell. I mean, for a buyer, if you've been sitting on the fence, here's some exciting news that it has, it is slowed down um, to where you're not having that craziness and multiple offers and a call to action of the sellers really, really work with an, an expert that's going to be able to help you price your home right to sell mm-hmm. and a great negotiator, as Dan mentioned as well. So, uh, Kim, what are the first steps in getting your home ready to put it on the market? Well, you want to, your presentation is always going to be key. Okay. And we've talked about that before mm-hmm. in our staging, you know, conversations and times I've been in on the show. Uh, curb appeal is huge. Uh-huh. Um, you know, get your yard, you know, looking good. Yes. Mulch in the, you know, mulch you know, pressure wash, you know, make sure your gutters are clean, the facade of your house that is first clean. first impression. First impression is huge. Mm-hmm. Inside declutter, you know, stage if necessary. And it can be light staging. It can be the extent of decluttering, hiding stuff, putting it away, not making your garage necessarily, necessarily your storage unit. Uh-huh. Get a pod, get it off site, not sitting in your driveway. <laughs> you know, you want to have good pictures, cars out of the driveway for your pictures. Uh-huh. But just so it's clean. It's clean. It can be an expensive house. It can be an inexpensive house. But yeah. you just... Whoever the buyer is at that price point, you just want it to be able to pop and just be appealing. Yes. Um, you know, so that would be the first step. And then, of course, once we're at that point, we're scheduling professional photography. Most uh-huh. um, good agents today, I mean, most of us schedule professional photographers. You're not seeing people out there with their iPhones. We do see them occasionally. Dan can attest to that. And I get a couple <laughs> of calls. I've gotten two expired listings this year. Uh-huh. And um, they're like, here we had our listing with another agent. And I'm like, well, first, the pictures were horrible. Yeah. I'm like, I'm not trying to be rude, but your house is like black in the pictures. Nobody's even going to want to see it. Wow. So I said, you're just getting better p- pictures will help. One of them sold in two days. We just got professional photography. Everything else is the same. Yeah. It's somebody who actually wanted to see it. Yeah. It makes a big difference. So, you know, getting the getting that stage set for... Um, you know, making sure it's going to appeal, you know, to the of largest course. audience. It's clean, presentable. 
Um, then I think the next step is getting the photographer in there. We also do like a 3D Matterport tour uh-huh. on all of our listings. So we've got the video tour. We've got aerial photography that we do now. Actually, on almost all of my listings, everything's got aerial drone photography. Nice. Unless it's going to be a disservice with power lines or something crazy. Uh-huh. Pretty much all of my um, houses, even just in a regular cookie cutter neighborhood or getting Matterport too. Okay. So just getting all of those things in place to be able to hit the ground running. Makes sense. So let's go back uh, with staging and the importance mm-hmm. of uh, staging a home. Absolutely. So it's important. Um, people want to be able to see themselves in the property. Yes. You know, decluttering, um, taking down a lot of your own personal, you know, pictures and things like that. I always I'm, I'm okay with you a few. You uh-huh. know, um, the more attractive the family, though, the better. <laughs> I went in Kenmore. If they have Dan's they eyes, beautiful. then he yes, can, yeah, Dan he has, could be rocking his picture. Yes, Dan has very handsome eyes, very nice <laughs> yeah, eyes, ladies. He's over there no. blushing. <laughs> First thing I saw was We like, were nice talking about blushes. that before we came in, uh, came into the show, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So if you're looking for a realtor with good eyes, call Dan. <laughs> yeah. He's your guy. So, if you're um, looking for a beautiful <laughs> woman, call Kim. <laughs> yes, thank you. We're a good little pair here. I mean, yeah. We'll team up. Yeah. So, um, so basically, you know, I did have a listing recently in Kenmore, and my client, it's like literally could be models. They're incredible. And I was like, okay, leave the pictures. They're fine. Uh-huh. You know, and one of the agents who saw it was like a little much on the pictures. I'm like, well, I thought they were nice. So we left them. So it was kind of a picture wall and it would have looked weird without it. So we did. But for the most part, you want to declutter. Um, you want things to be fresh, neutral, um, that kind of thing. Just sure. so it appeals, you know, um, and looks homey. Yeah. In. So let's talk about, uh, you mentioned 3D and mm-hmm. how you do that on all of your, mm-hmm. your listings. Talk about the importance yeah. of, of that. So one of the things, especially being um, in the east side, you know, we have a lot of um, transplants to our area, whether yes. they're international or locally. I think it's important. Um, the 3D tours these days, it's a like Matterport 3D technology. So it's kind of like a video game where you can basically walk down hallways, walk in rooms, out of rooms. Um, it's multi-floor, so you can kind of see how the whole house stacks together. Um, I think for people relocating in or out of the area, it's kind of nice. Um, it's a nice added feature, and it's pretty mm-hmm. true, pretty accurate depiction of, you know, wall sizes. Nothing is distorted, uh-huh. things like that. And so if people are looking from abroad or out of the area, they can get a better feel for what the listings are. Especially so they can actually feel area. comfortable in, in actually mm-hmm. purchasing the property yeah. without coming in and, and seeing it. Yeah. And especially in a competitive market and stuff, sometimes it's hard for people. You know, the house might be there for three or four days, and they can't yes. book a flight and get here. It's just one more thing, you know, that, and we add our aerial to that, and then we host it all on a tour factory site. So it's very user-friendly. Yeah, that's awesome. So what's important um, to have a wide range of marketing for your listings and what avenues are you utilizing? Mm -hmm. Well, we um, start with great, you know, um, photography to start. Mm -hmm. So you want it to be appealing to the masses. Great, you know, depending on price point too, you might actually have a video shot versus, you know, you know, like a moving video. If it's a several million dollar home, it's going to be a little bit. There are a couple things more that you can do than your typical, you know, five hundred to seven hundred thousand uh-huh. dollar house that we have access to. Um, so that um, full color photography, good um, print material, so full color, full bleed, heavy card stock on all of that. Um, sometimes four-sided flyers if need be, uh-huh. um, you know, brokers open, open houses. Brokers opens are not horribly well attended in our area unless you bribe an agent to come. You know, most of us successful agents are busy. You're busy, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I whether I have lunch with them or not, I'm, I'm, yeah. I, I need to sell my clients' houses or find exactly. houses to buy. So I wouldn't put too much stock in a broker's open, to be honest mm-hmm. with you. I'm more worried about the open houses getting the people into the property yeah. for the seller. Yeah, makes sense. So do you have any suggestions for reaching the international buyer? Yeah. yeah. So one of the things that um, uh, Dan touched on, too, is um, anything over a million dollars in King County um, automatically goes on um, Luxury Portfolio International. Okay. And so it basically sweeps over to a company called GY, and that is um, basically Zillow in China. Um, and so because it's the only thing they can get through the firewall. So anything that's on Luxury Portfolio International automatically gets swept to GY. Uh-huh. Um, what I've done recently is I've actually got an additional subscription to GY. And Dan might want to do this, too. It's a pretty cool thing. Um, basically, I host, uh, bought like a 50 50- um, set block of listings. Okay. So my 50 listings will actually have additional exposure so I can upload more pictures to that listing oh. of that listing and video and things like that. Because normally you only would get four um, pictures where I can maximize on that and give the clients more exposure than typically you would if you didn't Which pay. is a huge benefit because mm-hmm. four pictures really doesn't say much mm-hmm. for the home and especially if they're not having an opportunity to come see it. Yeah. And yeah. so it's, it's surprising. Probably less than like 2% of agents, maybe 1 yeah. or 2% actually do that. Okay. So I just started that about six months ago and I think that's just one other, you never know where the buyer's coming from. Yes. So it's just one more thing that you can, you know, put in your toolbox. Yeah. 
Well, if you were to um, give a shout out to either a buyer or a seller, mm-hmm. I mean, Kim, I know you have huge success in the business and you're just a firecracker. I mean, you've got so Thank much you. on your plate and you do so much and and you're just you know awesome at all of it. Um, but, you know, what what advice would you give to my buyer or seller that's listening to the show today? On a buyer side, um, once again, as we've said many times, make sure you're pre-qualified with a wonderful lender like Mm -hmm. Tina. It's super important. And those of us experienced agents in the business, um, it does make a difference of who you work with. I recently had a seller who unfortunately um, got to closing and they had Quicken. No offense to anybody, but they had a Quicken loan um, prior to closing. All of a sudden they got to the closing table and didn't realize they were being charged 2.375 in points and wondered why their closing costs were How twice as much. Heck that, I mean, with all the regulations mm-hmm. that, I mean, that's like surprising. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, su- I'm sure it was probably disclosed up yeah, front. But, of course. And I tried to offer other options, but he was yeah. like, oh, no, I love my person there, uh-huh. blah, blah, blah. And they'd refinance with them before. Yeah. So they got to closing and they were like, why are my, it's a $350,000 loan. Why are my um, closing costs $16,000? Yeah, yeah. I said, can you send me a copy of uh-huh. your, um, uh-huh. sell- of your yeah. um, estimated HUD or yes. whatever is it? My, the... The closing, the closing disclosure. The closing disclosure. They sent it to me, and I'm like, well, this is the, the first CD. problem. Yes, uh-huh. your CD. So <clears throat> they sent it to me, and I'm like, it's the day before closing. There's yeah. nothing we could do. And I, I, wish the, I wish as an agent I would have said, hey, send me that. But he yeah. was so happy. I'm never one to pull somebody yeah. away from where they want to be. Of course, of course. But at the, at the same time, I really probably just need to be a little bit more firm with that yeah. moving forward. Yeah. Just so people know what industry standard is and maybe if they want to pay more, they obviously yes. can. Well, but on an, a note to. on that, because that's really good, I uh, Kim, and on a note on that, and I'll you know give a plug for financing because it's a big deal. Finding the right real estate agent to get the right property at the right price and all of that, as well as the financing goes in conjunction. But there are options when it comes to interest rate. You can get any interest rate you want. And I'll always show five options. You can pay two points, get this rate, all the way to paying no closing cost at all to offer option five or something in between. So it's really analyzing those numbers and seeing how long you plan on keeping the property, whether you think the interest rates are not going to go down or not, you're going to refinance. And so it's looking at all those options. But at the closing table, understanding and knowing that you've reviewed them all. So obviously there were not options reviewing, but Mm -hmm. that may have been the right one for them, depending on how long they plan on keeping the property. So Kim, thank you so much for uh, coming in. It's always a pleasure to uh, have you here and look forward to having you back as well. Thank you for having me. Coming up next in the Money Hour, the benefits of having an independent insurance agent, Mason Mackey with Pacific Northwest Insurance, right here at 1150 AM KKNW after the short break.